Like most traders, you've probably considered whether you should be using tick data for your backtesting, or whether M1 data would do the job just as well. After all, if you could use M1 data, then your backtest would be significantly quicker. If you trade scalping systems or anything approaching a high frequency trading model, then of course, yes, you will need to use tick data. Performing backtests of these types of systems using M1 data would not produce like-for-like -like results across backtesting and live trading. But what if your average trade duration is, say, a couple of hours or 12 hours or maybe even a few days? Well, my view is that M1 data is actually more than sufficient for your backtesting process, but only if you use a coding technique that controls bar opening in your algo. You see, if you use M1 data in backtesting and your algo is then subject to a constant flow of tick data when you trade it live, this is not like-for-like -like behaviour. And when there's not this unity of behaviour across these two different use cases, then the results will be different. And if the results of your backtest can't be relied on to be indicative of the results you'll get in live trading, then what's the point of backtesting? So what does this requirement of controlling bar opening in your algo really mean? And how do you code it? Well, that's precisely what I'll be showing you in today's episode. I personally trade a multitude of different systems across a wide range of timeframes. Some of my shorter term systems have an average duration of about three hours per trade, but they include some trades that can open and close within 30 minutes if they catch the market at just the right time. Other systems I trade average out at about a 24 hour trade duration. But for all my systems, I use M1 data to backtest. Personally, I don't use any tick data at all. That's not to say that I never will. If I devise a scalping system or a system based on a much shorter time frame, then yes, of course, I'd have to turn to tick data. But to be honest, I haven't really focused much effort on that type of system up until this point. What I have learned from bitter experience in the past is that if you do use M1 data, but you don't control bar opening in your code, then the backtesting process is basically useless at providing an indication of how well your system will perform when you put it live. However, when you do control bar opening, the similarity between backtest results and live trading results can be incredibly close. Now, if you want more information about why this is the case and you want to properly understand the issues around historical price data, I actually talk about this in a lot more detail in episode 11 of my backtesting video series. And you really do need to understand these issues if you're going to properly understand backtesting using M1 data. If you want to check that out, I've put a link to episode 11 in the description right below. But what I'm going to cover in this episode is how you control bar opening in your code. Now I'll be using the MQL5 programming language for MetaTrader 5, but the concepts that I talk about will easily translate over to any other programming language and any other trading platform. So let's start to take a look at what this bar controlling code actually needs to achieve. In a nutshell, it needs to unify the behaviour between the price data that is processed by your algo during the backtesting process and the price data that's processed by your algo during live trading. Now, there are actually a number of ways that you can achieve this depending on the backtesting model that you're using. I'm going to show you the two ways that I use in my own code. The first is when using an open prices model from the chart time frame that you're trading on. So in the example shown here in the MT5 strategy tester, I've selected the open prices model on the M15 time frame. 
This means that the strategy tester will deliver one tick to your EA every 15 minutes, as soon as a new M1 bar opens. Now, when using this model, I always like to use the price data and indicator data from bar one instead of bar zero. The reason for this is that bar one is the most recent complete bar that will have finalized values for its open, high, low and close data. At the point in time that bar zero is sent to the EA, the bar is just made up from one tick, the opening tick. And so it's open, high, low and close all have the same value. So, as I say, it just makes sense to me that when using this model, it's best to use bar one for the price and for the indicator values. And these values taken from bar one are, of course, now fixed at this point in time and won't change. So remember, this is how data gets delivered by the back tester to the algo. So what you need to do in the code is replicate this behavior when trading in a live context. So we get unity of behavior between the two. But before we move on to the code, let's take a look at the second backtesting model. In the MT5 strategy tester, this is called one minute OHLC. So the difference here is that four ticks per minute are delivered to the EA the open, high, low and close prices for each one minute bar. Note here that although the choice of time frame had an impact on how many ticks got delivered to the EA when using the previous model, the open prices, this setting does not affect tick delivery at all when using the one minute OHLC model. Four ticks per minute get delivered to the EA regardless of the time frame setting. This value is still important, however, if you're using the period function in your EA's code, because it's this time frame that will be returned from that function. So here, the values for bar one are equivalent to what they were in the previous model using open prices, because this bar is finalized and its OHLC values are therefore fixed. The values for bar zero, however, will now be very different Whereas in the previous open prices model, it was only the first tick of the M15 bar that was delivered to the algo, here the M15 bar is allowed to evolve as each tick from the M1 data is delivered from the strategy tester. And if you think about it, there will be four ticks per minute delivered, so in our M15 bar, that equates to 60 ticks. So as I said before, when using the previous model, the open prices model, I prefer to use bar one to get my indicator and price values because bar one has proper OHLC values set. However, here, when we use this model, it makes sense to use bar zero for our price and indicator values because this bar evolves as each M1 tick is delivered. You wouldn't want to use bar one here with this model because what would be the point of processing each M1 tick if you were only going to use bar one, which doesn't change for each of those ticks. So you'd be repeatedly processing identical data. It would be pointless. Now, the way that I prefer to get unity between backtesting and live here is to process just the M1 open ticks. I personally ignore the low, high and close. The reason I do this is because in live trading, you don't actually know which tick will be the high and which tick will be the low at the time that they're delivered to the algo. The high and low values will still have a chance of changing until the M1 bar has actually closed. So how can you know whether you need to process a tick or not? Whereas the open tick is always the open tick. So by processing, that means that you can get unity across both scenarios. And for the duration of trades in my systems, one tick per minute is more than sufficient. So next, we move on to the actual code to achieve this unity of behavior. So click top right now to go to the next part.